And so I'm going to continue my build of an Epson P600 into an open direct to garment printer. And I'm at that point where the documentation kind of runs out. So um, one of the things you need to do is find this automatic sheet feeder. And there is a circuit board on the end of it that needs to be removed. And this circuit board gets repurposed. So we're going to take that off keep the screw. I don't think we need the rest of it. And there is a little tiny part that comes with the open DTG kit that this screws onto. So we're going to go ahead and reattach this. It's a little 3D printed part. And then we're going to find a home for it somewhere. Good enough. It's on there. I kind of wonder if that's what the other thing was for, but And I'm just going to use a small screw and attach it to the top of the printer. It may get moved again, it may not. I'm not really sure at this point. So, um, the next thing I want to do is um, kind of figure out what's next. So, I've got a all-in-one board and I've also got a little tiny board that goes in the top of the print head. And I think I'm going to deal with the top of the print head first. Because this is relatively quick and simple. So what I'm going to do is open up the print head and there's a little tiny board on here and I don't I don't have my GoPro hooked up. So there are it's only one board here and there are two connectors that are come out, and then there are two ribbon cables that come out very gently. And then there is a circuit board in here that needs to be replaced. So we'll just put that in there. I'm honestly not sure what the circuit board does. I just know that this board needs to be replaced. So we'll take that out and we'll replace it with the new board. And what I can see here is there are a couple of resistors present. So I suspect it's tricking this C86 board into thinking something's there when it's not. Eh, whatever. So we'll get this uh, in here and then we'll get it reconnected and buttoned back up. Uh, insert these uh, ribbon cables very gently just kind of work them in and then we'll do the two little connectors and with their wires the two pin and then the three pin and again these only go in one spot and then we'll go ahead and button this printer back up The screw that came out and put this back in and it's just one last thing that has to be messed with. Alright, so that's in and this can go in my little box of maybes. Um, but my all-in-one board needs to be spliced in. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and I'm going to get my... Um, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to go get the battery for this so I can film with the GoPro and then I'm going to put the base together and mount this to the base just to get some substance going and um, so let me get set up for that.
Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to build the base for the printer. And the base is made up of some modular aluminum and then some custom aluminum um, stands. So these stands go on either side of the printer and so Yep, that's working. So I'm just going to start setting these up. And these should slide in. And I have some pictures that I'm going to refer to here. Alright, so they go in the top plate. So there are two slots on this material. And the feet go in the top slot. And they're just it's a T-slot type material. There is no such thing as an easy way to get these inserted. So I'm just stabilize it and do it by hand. So I'm going to start with these at the very ends because I suspect that's where they go. I wouldn't have designed it with any overhang. Let me check my pictures. Yeah, that's how it looks in the pictures. And now I need an Allen wrench. Okay, so this is a three millimeter Allen wrench, and I'm just going to go ahead and snug these. Well, actually, I'm going to do a little more than snug. turn these up like this and work on this one. So some of these are probably too uh, screwed in too far and will have to be threaded out in order to insert the them into the channel. And that's okay. Um, if they weren't threaded out to a certain degree they would probably get lost in shipping. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. Looks like these might be hand cut because it looks like this one is just a hair longer than the other one. And that's okay. I mean, you know, this is this part is not rocket science. This is the science of approximation. So now we have a base. Let's go ahead and have a magic moment and test fit the printer on it.
All right, wow. Must have spent a lot of time on this because these fit exactly, which is freaking impressive because um, I just wouldn't expect that. So it does fit perfectly and uh, the little rubber feet drop down into the notches. So that's a beautiful thing. There is not a nice place to pick this up and remember the edges of that are sharp. So now what we want to do is figure out where the next piece is. And so what I'm doing is I'm just looking at pictures of a finished assembly to kind of figure out where things go. So I have another piece here. Not 100% sure how this goes. So it looks like this can just go over here for the moment. It looks like these little brackets, let's see what we've got here. Two, two, two. All right. So these little brackets are going to go, there's, they each get two screws and you assemble the, the pieces like this and then they're going to slide on the inside of the rails. So I'm just going to set that there and then I'm going to put the other one together. And that one's crap. And now I'm going to assemble these pieces that hold the um, rail in place that the shirt platen slides on.
And then the easiest way to do this is to just position yourself off to the side and slide this in from one side, attaching both screws at the same time. And then just repeat the process over here. And uh, this is not made easier because all of this is loose right now. And there is a little bit of weight to this rail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot this so that I can deal with one of these at a time. And that lets me okay so there we are on here and now I need to figure out what the positioning is my guess is that needs to be centered and then somewhere along those lines so what I need to do at this point is check my phone for an email I've got that tells me where to position this. Okay, so this center rail should overhang the back by uh, eight and a half inches. And I'm sort of laughing because there's really nothing funny about this. Nobody would get this. So that's eight and a half inches there. So what I'm going to do is just put this on its side so I can get the overhang right. All right, that's perfect. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tighten the bottom bolts. This should get me square Should get me, um, yeah, this should be pretty good. So what this does is gets my brackets square and now this should just slide up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it upside down because I want to be able to work on this. And now I'm going to try and figure out what the distance between the supports are or the brackets. So it is 13 and a quarter, which means that 6 and 1 eighth is where my center point's going to be. So that's six and one eight there. And that's six and one eight there. So now I'm going to just literally bring these to snug and check it again. So 
So I know I just moved it. So now I'm gonna check my measurement, sixth and one eighth, and there is a groove in the bottom of this. So I'm gonna get a rubber mallet so I can encourage this to go where it needs to. Hmm, well. Not having a rubber mallet. Oh, that's in the right spot. That's good. Okay, so it's out by a sixteenth of an inch, but both of them are sixteenth of an inch this way. So I'm just going to give it a good smack like that. That's good. And that's good. So now I'm going to tighten everything up. going to add a fair amount of rigidity to this frame by just tightening these brackets down. Okay, so at that point, we have a frame. So next what we need to do is go ahead and position our stepper motor. And the stepper motor goes in here and it goes on this end. So I've got a little bit of tightness here from where it looks like the uh, rail got whacked in shipping. And it's not really a big deal because once I get past it, I'm just going to tighten it down anyway. in. Now there is a limit switch. I'm not quite sure where it's at, but I have seen it. Those are feet. There's another arm. Plate. I guess I could attach the feet. 
because this is only going to get to be more fun here as time goes on. So now that we know where the top is going to be, we, we're, I'm going to go ahead and attach the feet. And there's just a bag of hardware here. And each, uh, there is a flat washer which gets inserted onto a, a hex nut. Nope, wrong answer. So apparently it is a bolt with a flat washer. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in here. Yeah, and that makes sense. So it looks like this. That's an assembly. And then an assembly just goes on here and gets tightened down. And you just put one in each corner where you think they belong. This will just keep it from kind of walking around in the off chance that it decided it wanted to walk around. There's two. Come around to this side. So there are some quality challenges with these uh, T-nuts. The threading on them is uh, pretty, pretty uh, basic and it's uh, not all of them are wanting to thread properly. And it's very easy to get them cross-threaded. So I'm going to see if I can do this one backwards because going forwards isn't working. Yep, I can put the locking uh, T-nut in backwards and it'll be, it's just fine. So while we have this upside down, I'm going to go ahead and put on this idle wheel. And it just goes on the opposite end of the rail. And 
and I'm just going to stick it at the very end for the moment. And you want to make sure you get the bearing on the same side as the servo. And I'm looking for that micro switch that I know I saw, but now I can't find. Ah, there it is. It uh, can't find it because it was in the bottom of the box. Now, there ought to be, yep, there's already a nut assembly on the bottom of this, so all I have to do is screw it in. And again, I'm going to look at the pictures. All right. So first, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over because this will be much easier to do with the orientation and matching. And it is necessary to back this off a few turns. All right. Not really sure where this goes, so I'm just going to lock it down in, in this position here. So the next thing that seems to make sense is to run, uh, I'm going to call this the carriage. And it probably rides on the outside of these channels. Yeah. Which would be a good theory, except I need to take this switch off in order to get this on. See the switch? which is held on by one screw or the idler pulley. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this off. No, nope, wrong answer. It's gonna have to be that idler pulley. So, I'm going to flip this on its edge because this will be easier to do like this. So we'll just slide that off. And then this is not square, so I'm going to go ahead and square it because it just irritates me not having it square. One of the challenges in being a printer is that you notice square. So the belt side needs to be up and I'm just going to roll this on. I think this is probably a weak point in the design. Yeah, something is seriously wrong here. Because I don't have clearance. Okay, so I had to redo um, a big portion of this. I don't know when my camera stopped because Canon just automatically stops after 20 minutes or so. Okay, so there is an orientation to these angle brackets that hold this 
roller or this this rail on that the shirt platen rides on and the longer side needs to go against the bottom frame and the short side needs to go horizontal. So I'm going to go ahead and put this idler pulley back in and I'm going to note the orientation of it. And then I'm going to try to just leave it square at the end of the plate here. And now I'm going to flip this over and just let it sit. Just check this. Yep, I've got full, full run. And now I'm going to undo the packaging here and see if I can figure out, oh, how convenient. It is already attached. So now all I need to do is figure out how to get it on here. It's actually crimped. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to use the idler pulley to set the tension. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to loosen the T-nuts for the idler, idler pulley. I'm going to slide it in a couple inches, which should give me the clearance I need. To weave my belt in and it's actually really nice that this is done because this is one of the harder parts of most of these projects is getting this this belt tension right so at this point what I'm gonna do is make sure my belt is straight and then I'm just gonna put you know a hand grip pressure on it because I don't think this needs to be super tight it's not lift and weight it's just gonna move back and forth And so I'm just checking for mechanical stops, and I think we're good. I'm still suspect of these not of these uh, rollers that ride along here. I, I think there's a better way to do this, but um, yeah, they're going to eventually loosen up and cause problems. So. Next, what I need to do is look at my pictures and see what the next step is. We're done with that part. And we're done with that part. Oh, I bet you I have this backwards. Buck and A. I bet you this is backwards. God damn it. This no instruction shit's pissing me off. So I have uh, had about enough of fucking undoing shit because it's not documented. So what I'm going to do is loosen. Yeah, I have to undo one of these, don't I? So I'm going to I'm gonna loosen this because this whole rail is backwards. And then this is going to have to come off again. So the servo motor goes in the back. And that explains why this seemed like it was off balance. And I'm going to just loosen the rail and then I'm going to just flip the rail around. So first things, I'm going to undo the tension there and remove this, and then I'm just going to slide this out, maybe. And... <sighs> 
set this down. And then I'm going to turn this upside down because I think this will be easier to do upside down. So one of the challenges is these uh, T-nuts are quite small and they have a mind of their own when it comes to alignment. I'm just going to put that up. That'll get me started. And then I can ride this forward. And again, I'm going to just flip this on its end so I can get to eight and a half inches. So I'm going to put a mark on this at this point because I'm, I'm really getting sick and tired of managing, measuring and measuring and measuring. So that's eight and a half inches. And I'll bring this mark there. I'm going to watch my belt and just flip this upside down and double check my square. Alright, so I'm square. At this point, I'm going to lock everything down, and hopefully it's the last time I have to do this, because quite frankly, I'm getting sick of it. So. We're going to put this on again. Oops, nope, can't tighten it. So I got to loosen that.
So what I'm doing now is working on making sure that this belt is straight and doesn't have any kinks in it. So once I get to that point, I'm simply going to pull on this with hand pressure. So probably five, six pounds of pressure and tighten it up. belt should go back this far. So what I'm going to do now is attempt to align this. So I'm going to look at this, not that side, not that side. All right, so it has the switch in reverse. I just don't see how it matters what side the switch is on. The switch just needs to hit. And it's not gonna hit from here because the switch is backwards. So I'm gonna mount the switch on the other side. So what I'm doing here is just stopping this just short. Just short of where the belt will engage the pulley because I think that's where it belongs. So that's in. This is harder than it needs to be. All right, so I have some more parts. I don't quite know what they do. So we're going to try and figure out one of these is a t shirt platen, and I'm guessing it's the one with the thumb screws, and one of these is not. I think it goes like this. Oh, I must be getting warm because the holes line up. And we've got another hardware bag. And again, I just think this goes in this direction. And the holes line up, so I must be right. So I need a different size Allen wrench. Oh man, really? Okay, so there's a foul here in that we've got metric and standard hardware. These are 3 16 and the rest of this was metric. That's not nice. something's upside down here. But we're going to check. Nope, we're not upside down. Okay. It just seems odd that there's a really super heavy duty plate at the bottom. I 
think we're going to have clearance issues. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these. So next what I'm going to do is go ahead and take all this hardware off. I probably would have used bigger bolts here just simply because these are tiny and they're easy to lose. So. And I don't think there's a front or a back. Yeah, everything seems to line up. So I'm gonna slide this out where I can get to it. And then I'm just gonna tighten all this down. I think these screws are too long as well. I would have used larger screws and I would have made them much shorter. Could easily lose th three eighths of an inch on these. I think you're going to wind up with clearance issues on the right, but let's go find out. <clears throat> oh yeah, we're not even going to get seated here before we have clearance issues. Mm, maybe not. So I got this side seated. I got that side seated. Oh yeah, I've got like just a fraction of an inch here, which is not good. So let's uh, scoot this over. I can change the playback mode only when the music is playing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to center the platen. So I think that's good. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up. So it's beginning to look more like a t-shirt printer and I can, I, I could see where a t-shirt could come in through here. I can't quite get to the bottom of the t-shirt. So that may be an alignment issue and I've got, I've got a whole lot more t-shirts sticking out here than I think I need. But this is fairly easy and then I, I've got like a couple inches of t-shirt I can't get to. So. Let's just look at this. 
This platen is 18 by 12. So, you know, I probably literally can get 12 by 16, and that's, that's an awful lot of t-shirt, but I think this needs to slide maybe another two inches. So we'll, we'll figure that out. That to me is a tuning issue and um, should be relatively easy to fix. So I'm beginning to feel like I'm building a t-shirt printer and not just destroying a $700 printer with $1,000 in parts. Now at this point, I need to turn the printer. to work on the back and throw all of my tools on the floor. So I believe, you know, I'm left with some strange things. I've got an extra plate. I don't know why I have an extra plate, but I think this is a shelf that the main board goes on. In fact, I think it goes right here. There's a nice set of holes that line up to it, and everything else on here is precision, so I'm going to believe for a second that this is precision too. screws are the same, I believe. That these line up in one spot. So there's one. There's two. And here is this. Now, none of these line up, so I don't know what's going on here. And I don't think I have access to these, not in the traditional sense. These are overkill, but it'll be just fine for what I'm doing. I don't think I can get in there with that, but I can get in here with my little right angle.
So we can only get in here a quarter of a turn at a time, which is really irritating. All right, so we're good. And now we get to figure out how this mounts, if it mounts. I think it just sits here. And I need a pair of wire cutters. Nippers to the rescue, we'll just cut this. This is the 48 volt cable. Half looks pretty good. All right, now we have a very nice static package. Open DTG, do, 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 do. Doesn't fit like that, does fit like that, doesn't fit like that. Oh, yes it does. It secures to the existing screws. So, we're gonna take a couple screws out and recycle. So I thought everything was threaded on this. So I'm going to fish for longer screws because I don't think the screws that came out were long enough to go back in. holes in here, but I don't know what they're for. I don't know if I'm supposed to drill. That would certainly be the logical explanation. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's going to need to be over there, because this lives in this neighborhood anyway. So that's in that neighborhood. This is in this neighborhood. I don't know where that goes. I wouldn't have done these connectors here either. All right, so. We've got a ribbon, We've got this, which has a mating piece up there. Yeah, we're gonna have to secure this somehow. I just don't know how. I think it's gonna wind up being drilled. Cause nothing else makes any sense.
All right, well, not ready for those, but certainly start connecting some of these. They only go in one place anyway. We got all that connected and then it's time for this but I'm not gonna mess with that yet So at this point, I'm just going to have to figure out where some of this stuff goes. I think this has to move yet again, but I see where it moves now. So I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to move this board over here. And that's going to get that close enough to where it can do its, its little bit of magic that it needs to do. There's a couple things that need to be plugged in over here.
Yeah, no, that's not gonna work either. I'm trying to find a spot for this that it can be connected to what it needs to be connected to. And So that's in. And then that's in. All right, so those are in. And then we'll just put that up like that. still having issues. Uh, we'll just rotate that around like that. And then I think this can come back in. Suck all this, these wires out of the way. All right, so we're getting there. I need to go do some research and read some documentation because I don't know how this board mounts and I mean, I don't know how the, the CPU is gonna mount and I'm still um, befuddled about a couple things. All right, friends, so uh, we're back at it again. Looks like I made a mistake. Okay, so the head rides on a rail, and if the rail's not there, the head has a tendency to fall forward. So um, fortunately, I didn't throw anything away, so I still got the rail. Um, let me be honest, this is a shitty design. You know, it means that at some point, this will wear against the plastic, and it will cause slop in the printer. That's sad. I uh, really thought Epson would do a nicer job of this. So it does just drop down into this little spot. So, I mean, on the bright side, it, it's kind of locked in its little spot. But uh, I had higher hopes for Epson's precision. So as you work through your project, don't throw anything away until you are done. Or you may be unpleasantly surprised. So I'm gonna pick a slightly longer metal screw to reattach this stupid little motor. Which I believe needs to be there. I don't see what it would plug into over here though. Oh, we'll figure that out in a minute. So at this point, I'm just kind of working my way through this stuff. And 
One of the things that needs to happen next is I need to attach this board. And um, one of the options is to drill holes through this into the substrate below, but I don't really feel like doing that. So I'm gonna go hunt down some Velcro that I have and I'm gonna Velcro the thing in place.